It is now six o'clock. And we're having a notice of a uh, the city council special special meeting. It's Tuesday, May third, six p.m. And I call the meeting to order. And discussion of. Call meeting orders that you all. Okay, so we have to. Sure. Yeah, uh, since I'm going to ask for the, the, uh, the meeting, I thought I would start and uh, I just kind of want to back up and, and talk about this. Uh, about two weeks before last week's meeting, uh, a private citizen contacted me and I guess some other councilmen asking about the validity of the reorganization of the police department and whether or not it violated the officer's bill of rights. And uh, quite honestly, I didn't know the answer to that. So I asked the city attorney his opinion on that. He advised me that the uh, the mayor had sought uh, legal counsel or opinion from the particular cities regarding that. So on the Friday prior to the last Tuesday's meeting, I asked the mayor if he could, could uh, give us that information. And that was the information I was referring to in last Tuesday's meeting that, that I was waiting for and hoping that we would have. Uh, and as it turns out, we received that information uh, yesterday, I guess. So uh, we, now, I, we now have that information that I, that I was uh, speaking of. So, and I, yield if you can, I yield the floor. Um, I think it would be uh, uh, wise if uh, we could get that letter shared with everybody here that didn't have a chance to read it. So that we can see from KLC. And I'd be glad to, to read it if that's okay with everybody. I, it, and I, I sent this out actually. Uh, Kathy was nice enough. I was the, the device I had didn't have your all's email, so I asked Kathy uh, to get it to you as quickly as possible. I asked Kathy to send this letter out uh, to you all, and it is in response to my request from League of Cities um, from JD Cheney, who's attorney with League of Cities, um, to uh, to answer my questions that I had uh, concerning I, my concern was a lot of but my other concern was um, that it was basically to serve a dual purpose and that was to get the information that Councilman Hagan referred to about uh, to confirm uh, conversations uh, that the mayor had with League of Cities because he had asked for that. And I'm just going to read that now. It says, Dear Mr. Butler, it's from uh, the Kentucky League of Cities. It's signed by uh, James D. Cheney, uh, Deputy Executive Director, uh, KLC. Dear Mr. Butler, I'm writing uh, to follow up our conversation uh, of last Wednesday, April 27th, and your request for confirmation of the mayor's conversation with KLC member of legal services regarding the application of KRS 15520, commonly referred to as the Police Officers' Bill of Rights, to a proposed management restructuring of the city's police department. In addition, you inquired about the council's potential exercise of its investigatory powers to determine whether the reorganization actions subsequent ta subsequently taken by the mayor were in violation of KRS 15520. The mayor spoke with Andy, Andrea Schindelbauer, Maine, uh, in KLC uh, Member Legal Services on March 11th and requested information on the application of fi KRS 15520 to a proposed reorganization of the city's police department. Andrea provided information on the recently modified version of KRS 15520. This information in conversation generally confirmed that a proposed purely motivated and solely intended to re a proposal purely motivated and solely intended to or reorganize the, the department's personnel structure would not trigger the requirements of KRS 15520 since the personnel decisions incidental the person the personnel decisions incidental to the restructuring were not influenced in any way by a citizen complaint or based on any officer's violation of internal law enforcement policies or procedures. As with all types of inform informational responses provided by KLC to city officials, the assumption is that the facts provided by the requesting city official are complete and accurate. In addition, we indicated the strong possibility that the council was considering using its investigatory powers under KRS 83A 130 subsection 13 to begin investigation as to whether the mayor's action violated the statutory provisions of KRS 15520. While the council has granted the authority to investigate the operation of city government under conditions enumerated under KRS 83 a 13 the proposed course of action by the council to essentially style itself as a judicial tribunal 
to determine whether the city government violated a state statute that accords rights to an individual employee would not only be unconventional but also could but also could potentially expose city government to liability in any private right of action taken by an impacted officer given the potential exposure of the city a wise course of action for you as city's legal counsel maybe may be to guide the legislative body that the scope of its investigation should be narrowed to avoid the potential of any finding regarding the question of whether the personnel action violated state law applicable to the individual employee this decision is more properly made before a court of law if an officer decides to bring suit on them. <coughs> Moreover, the proposed action of the council could impact all cities of Kentucky if there is an adverse finding in appellant courts because of the council's conclusion slash admission that there was a violation of KRS 15520. Regardless of whether the council proceeds with an investigation under these circumstances, the likelihood of being able to sustain a finding of mis misconduct on the part of the mayor for a violation of KRS 15520 is highly unlikely since there is a good faith question of law as to whether the statute uh, actually applied under the facts presented re presented related to the department reorganization. In closing, I want to reiterate that the KLC staff is available to all city officials to help them with difficult issues as part of serving our organization's goal to help enhance the quality of governance of our, in our cities. In providing information or other services, our staff is careful to avoid any impression that we dictate regarding the wisdom of policy choices made at the local level. Supporting the ability of local officials, officials to make policy decisions on behalf of their citizens is at the core of KLC's entire mission. However, many of the policy choices considered at the local level have considerable debate and are often and often come with their share of disagreement between elected and appointed <coughs> officials in the individual, individual community. It's very important as uh, the organization that represents the entirety of the city, uh, city government through their elected and appointed officials that the provision of services and information not be construed as an organizational support or opposition on one side or the other of local debate regarding how the city should proceed on a policy matter. Our objection is not to take sides regarding these matters, but to provide resources to equip local officials to help them best make those decisions. Please feel free to contact me if you have any additional, need any additional information on the matter. Respectfully, James D. Cheney, Deputy Executive Director of KLC. And that uh, letter, again, I undertook that um, as I've informed uh, anybody, any of the members that have called, including the mayor. Um, you know, I take pretty seriously my role as uh, attorney for the city of Barstown. Um, the municipal corporation. Uh, I'm not the mayor's attorney. I'm not the council's attorney as such. I'm the council for the, the, the city of Barstown. So were this to go forward, I just wanted you all to be aware that uh, my role would be to protect interests of the city. Um, not necessarily, I definitely wouldn't be involved directly with the investigatory and I wouldn't be providing any kind of uh, uh, advice to the mayor on how to uh, proceed in any kind of manner but I did I did undertook this because of my concern that I voiced before that um, if there were a finding my opinion and I think it's confirmed this letter my opinion was that should there be a finding of a violation of uh, a policeman's right which a policeman's right which under this Bill of Rights is theirs to assert that the city would then be uh, making itself liable to those officers um, at least arguably so, and I think uh, more directly so. Okay. Um, the, uh, the mayor's response that he received from KLC, that was a verbal one, I guess. It wasn't anything in writing, correct? I'm just kind of just... I, 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 I assume that. I don't know over that. The phone, that over the phone. Over the phone, that's my understanding. Okay. But I don't have direct knowledge for that. Okay, so. that, okay then. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, have the, the officers or officer or whatever obtained legal counsel? Um, what, we have, what we have done, we and Larry Green, who I think has left, um, we were notified, we, through various sources, that the, uh, the two police officers that were demoted 
um, have hired counsel or at least uh, consulted with counsel and uh, attorneys and um, we've notified League of Cities of that fact uh, because there might be um, you know pending litigation uh, so we try to involve our representation early if someone is involved in representation against the city of Arsenal. I have a comment. <clears throat> I'm going to give you my opinion. My opinion, we need to implement the investigation. So this issue will be cleared up for the future of city government in Barstown. Who was right and who was wrong. I would not want to experience this issue no more. In my opinion, by implementing this investigation, if the mayor was in his rights, he cleared up. If he's wrong, that's another issue. And to not to have an investigation, it's going to be a program up here that we council members were right, the mayor was wrong. So in my opinion, this issue is not good for this community, this beautiful co co community that it was. And this issue need to be cleared up. I've been on the council for 20 some years. I've never, never expressed nothing like this before. And I think we need to clear this issue up, as council ladies say, clear the air. That's in my opinion. I think we should follow through with it. I understand the legal, legal aspect of it. And I have read this, and I've read this many times. This is a, it's no recommendation. It's just info for, for you turning, info for us. And I have read the, the city official, Liga Hang Guy book. And I know what our rights are. And this have taken place before. We, 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 we not, we'll not be the only city government that has not, I mean, have implemented an investigation as many cities. I could name you all many cities that done did this. That's my opinion. Uh, city Attorney, I have a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you know what the facts were that were given to Kentucky League of Cities? What questions were given? to receive the response that the Kentucky Le uh, League of Cities gave? Um, because Kentucky League of Cities can only address the information that they're given. Yes. Okay. Yes, and, and the, um, I laid out the, um, because again, the dual purpose here, um, the dual purpose was to confirm the mayors, that the mayor did uh, respond and um, I said, what did, essentially I asked them what they were told and that's what they were trying to reflect here that it was, it was, and I think they used the language in here. Um, this information and conversation generally confirmed that a proposal purely motivated and solely intended to reorganize the department's personnel structure. That, that was what they were told is that that this was a proposal to intended to reorganize the personnel structure. I don't think we should get into in the legal aspect of this. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, well, three things step, uh, you know, kind of jump out at me on this letter. Well, one is that they never came out and said, you know, he's completely not wrong in this letter. But the word motivate, motivated, assumption, and good faith, question of the law. The um, proposed management restructuring of the city's police department. The question that has never been answered to us to clear the air were information, just general information given to us. But it says requested information on the application of the KRS 15.520. Mm -hmm. So 
surely everyone's heard through the media statements it's confidentiality but the very next sentence or the very next word is time cards or time sheets performance so if if there's no correlation to it then why is it confidential why why is it confidential if if it doesn't have to do with 15-520 now I'm just asking because this is on record so I'm just trying to figure out why you would be claiming confidentiality if it doesn't have to do with the 15-520 okay let me, let me see if I can break that down because this is kind of a little complex for me. Um, well, first of all, when you say, I assume you're talking about the mayor when you say you, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, I don't. I, I was, when you said confidentiality, you know, obviously as an attorney, I have a lot of things that attorney-client privilege are confidential. So I, want, I was listening very intently to that. Um, if no, I'm, I'm representing the statement that he says over and over again, this is confidential, confidentiality. I, I, I'm not familiar with that assertion of confidentiality, quite frankly. Um, okay. um, and so I don't, I don't know. The, 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 I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but in terms of, and I, going back to at least initially what you said, um, that I think it's important to look at that second paragraph, the last sentence, where it says, as with all types of informational responses provided by KLC to city officials, the assumption is that the facts provided by the requesting city official are complete and accurate. True. And so, yes, it, they, they are saying, as would anybody, any attorney, that based on what you've told me, this is okay. But if you ever notice, I hedge all the time. I say, but if there's something I don't know, my advice might change my opinion might change so i think that's that's that and, and if that's what you were referring to i think you said assumption and there was a couple other uh words that you were using in there um i think that's the the part of that statement that uh, you know says that they're they're trying to uh, make it clear that they, based on what they know and what they were told. Of the state of Kentucky, how many restructures have we had in the oh, state of Kentucky? I don't know. Don't I really don't have any in idea. In the state of Kentucky, how many restructures would be done without the chief of police? I wouldn't know that answer. What I'm asking is this. We have no more answers today than we had two weeks ago or a week ago. The inability of the mayor to answer questions that not just the council, but the public wants to know. Do we really think that the public is sitting here for no good reason? To skip over the chief of police during a restructure, what's the motivation? What's the motivation of the promotions and the demotions? If we do nothing today, we are accepting that what was done is appropriate. Inaction is an action. And I'm going to say this again. Inaction is an action confirming that the actions performed were appropriate. So going forward from today, we're agreeing with what the mayor did. Were the motivations pure? Were they a disguise of a restructure 
making it clear path for the promotions and the, and the demotions. In assuming, why should we make an assumption that we have all the facts? Why should we make an assumption that what the mayor says is true? Because over and over again, through the media, we've been caught with our pants down. The last incident was 911. I'm not going to sit here and insult the intelligence of you or the public. I think as council members, we owe it to the public to do the right thing. Because once again, if we didn't do anything wrong, there shouldn't be a problem with the investigation. This is not a removal hearing. This is a simple request to investigate, to calm the waters of our town. With the chief of police, at least we would have had answers because the chief of police knows his people. His job is to recommend. He, he knows who's in line for jobs. He knows who's qualified for jobs. In this restructure, it looks like the mayor had complete control, which he has authority to do this, but knock out others, bring others in, and run the department as he see fits. We don't know what the facts were, uh, you know, the facts that were provided to Kentucky League of Cities. Kentucky League of Cities is a training mechanism, a legal mechanism, and an insurance carrier. And I want you to know this, you know, that as an insurance carrier, like you have on your cars, or trucks, or boats, you pay premiums. We pay premiums. So the statement of, you know, it coming directly out of our pockets, that, that wouldn't be quite true. Premiums may go up if there was wrongdoing. But we owe it to the people to have an investigation to clear the air. If the mayor is right, he's right. But if he's wrong, the people deserve to hear that. They deserve to know. The statements that were made reflect more on demotions and promotions than they do restructuring of the police department. What do we have that shows that it was restructured? Where, where is that diagram, dry, di diagram at? Where, where is that at? That shows that you know, we, we restructured something. Could I address that? No, no, I'm, I'm speaking to the city clerk. Can I keep going? It oh, is this I thought you had a question. No, 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 I don't. Um, this whole picture is cloaked under the confidentiality. Yeah. Every time that we ask a question, it's confidential, but it's backdoored backdoored with the words, time cards, time sheets, performance. Well, if that's the case, I'm sorry. If that is the case, then they deserve a hearing. If that's what it is. You, you can't just ramble on at the mouth and say unjustified things twice. Twice that's been done. WHAS recorded that. <coughs> So why do we have those innuendos? What's the basis for that? <coughs> if it's 
restructuring. <coughs> is it retitling? Did we retitle? Did we properly title? There's nothing to go on here. There's, there's no documentation. We, we listen to the mayor. He is our mayor. But as we know, he has made clear-cut decisions that have devastated our community. One year and five months. I cannot see a good reason why you wouldn't have an investigation. Are you done? No, I'm not done. I'll let you know when you have the floor. Okay. In the restructuring, did we, what was the benefit of the, the restructuring? How did we reorganize the personnel structure? I think that the public should know the true motivation of the presumed restructuring. What was the basis for the, the promotions and the, and the demotions that the chief of police had no input in on? The one that knows his people the best. And I think we all still have confidence in our chief. He resigned, he didn't get fired. So why wouldn't he be in why wouldn't he be in on that, that such an important decision? Sure, you have access to personnel records, but you don't know what they do day to day. And such a gravely promotion and demotions. A man that's been with the city for 27 years, get ready to leave in July, and, and, and you demoted? A young man that resigned that doesn't have a job today. What does that say about integrity or the morale of the police department? My fellow councilmen, we have an issue. We have an issue. So, so you think no one else is leaving? How are we going to bring another chief here? I'm just asking you to think about this decision. Take the personal out and just think about the decision. Think about the people that elected you. How many people have reached out to you? Wanting answers that I can't provide, and the mayor won't talk to him. And then on another level, let me think, let me let you think about this. The threats that have been going around. It's horrible. It's just horrible. That shouldn't happen. Because someone is speaking up and you get threats. It's ridiculous. It's not right. This is America. You have the floor. No. Well, before you go, Councilman, one, one thing about the League of Cities and the insurance, they provide us with the defense. They don't provide, we, if we had a settlement, we would have to pay the settlement. So, but they would pay for our defense. <coughs> Councilman Bowman, can uh, uh, Ms. Barbie talk? She's got sure. some answers to questions. 
Well, just listening to Councilman Copeland, Councilman Copeland and referencing some questions in regard to the restructuring. The restructuring was defined in the March 10th, 2016 safety committee minutes in which all council received, quest, uh, received the actual comments. And then also in the proposed restructuring of the compensation and classification plan, the restructuring was issued. And I understand that, Barbie, and thank you so much for bringing that up. However, the answers for the public have not been answered. Well, you were questioning whether you had the, had the information. Well, beforehand. I was speaking in general. So what I'm saying is that you say it's a restructure. Was it a restructure? There it is. Was it a restructure? Because well, clearly, we have issues. Well, Councilman Buck, and I, right? No, you need to go. Yeah. I'd like to start the state first. It's, uh, well, they believe it or not, I support the Bar Town Police Department and care at 15 by the way. And if the officers have a complaint, they need to file it and go through the proper channels and an investigation of that nature is beyond the scope of the council. It should be done by them and by the League of Cities and by their private council. Per 15.5.1. And with that letter from the League of Cities, we've always looked to, uh, in bright light upon uh, the, the League of Cities advice. And I think we're uh, getting ready to trade into dangerous territory uh, with, this, uh, with this vote. And I, I tell you, I'll never support it with taxpayers' money, this investigation. I think it's got a personal agenda. I think it's a divided council that has a personal agenda against a mayor who has never, never tried to cooperate or uh, attempt to work with this administration since it's been seated. It's obvious in the public. It's obvious everybody says it. And it's going to be ongoing whether you like it or not. But to drag the taxpayers in and put us into further libel liability and lawsuits by going down this road for somebody's personal agenda, then I think we're fools. So if we go that way, I won't vote for it. I'm not going to use taxpayers' money for it, I promise you. And there won't be no consensus vote either. Let me make a comment on, I was on the safety committee, we struck some parts of it. The other part, was be struck by the mayor and was not discussed with the safety committee. We we did a certain percent of it and he changed it, modified it, whatever, and uh, he did not discuss it with the safety committee. And I had some concerns with that because that's what the safety committee was supposed to be. And mayor went on his own, did not discuss what the safety committee. And I indicated I'm in favor of investigation. I don't care what you think. Because I wanna know who was right and who was wrong. If the mayor was right, no problem. If we we're wrong, no problem. Let's clear the air. If we don't clear the air, it'll happen again. Well, first off, I want to let everybody know that uh, uh, I have all respect that you can have for the chief and all the uh, uh, police officers that we have. Uh, I think they've done a good job. As far as I know, they've done an excellent job. Uh, but, with that said, I want to make it clear, crystal clear, that I support the public finding out whether there has been any misconduct on the part of anyone in government and keeping all of us accountable. However, I want to read some sections from this letter provided to us by the Kentucky League of Cities yesterday afternoon that really concerned me. I cannot in good faith agree to expose the city liability as explained in paragraph three of this letter. 
This is the part where the council has been referred to as a judicial, uh, judicial tribunal and warning of poss uh, possible exposing the city to liabil liability of actions taken by impact officers. I quote directly, this decision is made properly, made before a court of law of an officer declined to bring suit to the matter. To, to the matter. And again, I quote from next paragraph, regardless of whether the council proceeds with an investigation under these circumstances, the likelihood of being able to sustain a finding of misconduct on the part of the mayor for violation of KRS 15520 is highly unlikely. This, there, this is what they think. It, uh, since there is a good faith question of law as to whether the statute actually applies under the facts presented related to the, the uh, department uh, re, uh, reorganization. Because of this information, I cannot vote to approve to investigate the mayor on possible misconduct. This is too high of a risk to impose while we originally hoped to be able to clear the air. The risk could result in a much larger financial hardship and exposure and liability. My vote has always been to the best interest of all the people of Bartertown. It may not be the most popular vote, but it's always been and always will be a vote for the right of the people of Bardstown. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Williams. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, the first question I have is, uh, and I couldn't quite get what Councilman Buckland stated. He said that uh, a certain segment of council hasn't been cooperating with the mayor's administration. They've been dissolved a lot of them. Never darkened the door. I won't comment. Okay. okay. Well, well. Okay. Excuse me, uh, Councilman uh, yeah. Williams has a floor, please. I'm right. and so I'm just going to, are you referring to me by chance? No, sir. Okay. I, I, didn't, right. say no, I'm just, I didn't say any names. No, I didn't say any names. They all know who they are. You're not, you're not referring to me. So I'm just okay. worried about I didn't the say any names. Okay, cool. No problem. Okay. Um, uh, I don't have a personal vendetta against the mayor. Know that I have an agenda. Uh, the mayor and I had a conversation a week ago Monday in his office. And during that conversation, he just basically told me that it hadn't been a very effective 16 months. And uh, I don't know if that's a combination of some things he didn't do or some things we didn't do or if it was collective. But regardless, uh, we have, um, well, regardless, I, I agree with his statement because when we started out with his administration, we had angry constituents coming here for the first several meetings, and we have angry constituents that have been coming the last couple meetings. And it appears as if a cloud has been over his administration since it started. And right now it seems like storm clouds. And that, that concerns me. And I must admit, everybody has their own leadership style, and that's fine, but your, your do it now and apologize later philosophy, I'll just be honest, I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, of course, I don't, I don't have to agree with what you do with the restructuring, that falls within your administrative uh, purview, obviously. But we do need to put this event behind us. And, and what's concerning to me is opening Pandora's box. And that's where I'm concerned. But to use a cliche, I want the sun to be shining bright on our old Kentucky home. It hasn't been shining for quite some time. 
And so uh, that's all I have to say right now. I may make a comment. Councilman Mayor and I met one time. Remember, Mayor, you and I met one time, and I'll never meet with you again because you know what we discussed? End up controversial arguing at each other. You know what we discussed, and you were the one to start it. And Gentlemen, I'll never, I think we're getting out of the realm of. But anyway, if I've got something to say, I'm going to say it before. Let me speak, Barbara. If I've got something to say, I'm going to speak before the public so the public will hear what my, my question answer. That's all I have to say. That answers your question, Councilman Buffalo. Mr. Anderson. Yes, sir. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that this whole discussion is not about the mayor's administration. It's not about whether we like it or not. It's not about all that. It's about specific. Right. So let's all remember that. Uh, and I, and our, our power under KRS is to investigate elected officials for misconduct, incapacity, and uh, incompetence. We have to clearly focus on that. We don't have the authority to investigate an elected official because we want to clear the air, or because we want answers, or because we don't like the way something happened. That's not in our authority. We can't just all of a sudden decide we have that authority. We have to focus on misconduct, incapacity, or a dereliction of duty. And in this particular instance regarding the police restructuring, it seems clear that any misconduct would fall under the auspices of the Officer's Bill of Rights. That's where the law would be broken. That's where Kentucky statute would, would, be, would, would be broken. And from the KLC uh, comments, that uh, determination is not made by us. That's made, that's made in a court of law. We don't have the authority to make that determination. So I really see, and part, plus if we went down that road, at the same time an individual was uh, exercising his rights to, to bring a lawsuit, that would definitely muddy it up, not to, to say nothing of the liability that, that's discussed. But I guess I go back to, it's, it, it feels good for us sometimes to do things when people want us to do things. As elected officials, sometimes we think we know what everybody wants us to do, we know what the people want us to do. But whether the, the people, which are 15,000 people, there's 13,000 citizens, and I suspect that we don't know what the majority of them want us to do, we're left with doing what we have the authority to do, what we have the responsibility to do. And it's my opinion that we do, we do not have the authority to open an investigation, to clear the air, or to get questions, or to, un, because of some decision that was made that we don't like. And so I would suggest that we, we back away from this. And uh, if, if, if it comes to, a, if, if an individual officer takes it to court, that's where it will be decided. I think I think you could entertain a motion yeah. and take a vote and, and obviously I've talked to Councilwoman Copeland about uh, before and I basically apologize to her at the prior meeting I said you wanted to make a motion that was fairly specific and have details and I don't think that's necessarily so I think what you would be looking at is a motion to take the necessary steps to and, and fill in the blank because I can't remember exactly the word you use uh, Councilman Copeland but I think that that's the appropriate thing and then at that point if, if a motion were to pass to take the necessary steps to uh, investigate uh, under your all's authority to do so, then you would be looking at the next step would be to identify the, the <coughs> funds for that and that would be the second item on your agenda. And then you would want to be looking at, I suppose, after that you'd be talking about scope and the details of, of that. Well, in lieu of that, I make a motion we adjourn. Well, no, I'll I'll I, no, I'll go ahead and make a motion so that 
at when least. The motion's on the floor by <coughs> Councilman Hagan. Oh, okay. Need a second? I have a first uh, motion on the floor by Councilman Hagan to adjourn. I have a second by Councilman Buckman. Uh, discussion. discussion. Well, I would like to make a motion so that. Well, we um, have a motion on the floor right now. Discussion. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Excuse me, go right ahead. Basically, what you're saying is were this motion to fail, you would like to make a motion? Yes, yeah, so that people could know that, you know, the motion was put to the floor and that it was passed that or it didn't pass. Case, I would draw my motion. Thank you. I didn't think you were going to make a motion. I would draw it. All right, Councilman Button, you withdraw yours? I would draw my Thank you. Do I have any motion on the floor? Okay, so I'll make a motion to um, take the necessary steps to investigate activities for the mayor on um, restructuring of the police department and promotions and demotions. Second. Motion on the floor by Councilman Copeland. <laughs> Second by Councilman Lydian. Discussion? This is an individual count vote, right? Not necessarily. I would like an individual. I'll, no, it's still discussion. Discussion. I'll, I'm sorry. Yeah, that it just the, the motion to me is so general. I just don't know how we would even carry that out. I, I would be. The, 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 it would be the start of the process. There would be probably a series of motions to follow. Yeah. Um, and there would be. You're you're you're. You heard what I said last time and took it to heart. I, I appreciate that, but. There has to be a threshold vote before you go into a bunch of detail. I believe there needs to be a threshold vote, then a series of votes to you know hire somebody mm -hmm. to allocate funds, allocate funds, hire somebody, create a. Um, I think that it would need to be an investigation with you need parameters on that investigation um, and things of that nature. Some of which you could do by agreement, some of which you would do by motions. But this is to take the necessary steps. Uh, it would be to start the process. To investigate. To start the process of investigation. Yes. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Motion on the floor by Councilman Copeland, second by Councilman Lydian. Uh, she would like an individual, individual vote. vote. I'll start with Councilman Copeland. Aye. Aye. No. Aye. No. No. Motion failed. <coughs> Anybody else like to bring a motion? Anybody else another motion? <coughs> I have one. Motion to adjourn. Motion Second. by Councilman Williams. Second. Second by Councilman Fred Hagan. Motion to uh, meetings adjourned. Thank you, Councilman.